Hello and a very warm welcome. My name is Odo Sendaidokai and this video should help all people who are interested in music production under Linux but never asked. It's meant to be a solid foundation and lots of tips, tools and tricks are mentioned. It's going to be a very wild ride and even though you might not understand everything straight away, it's important that you have heard one or two things before and can put them into perspective. So relax, just let yourself be entertained. You can pause, rewind or watch it again at any time. I link the sources in the video description. One more thing. Since I use KDE, the program recommendations are also somewhat biased towards KDE. I'll explain what KDE is in a moment. If you use cool alternatives to KDE, please write them in the comments. Then let's get started. The first part of the video is about the Linux ecosystem as whole to get a little understanding of how Linux is structured. In other words, the basics that have already been absorbed with Mother's Milk and other operation systems chipped by Microsoft with a vaccination or brainwashed by Apple. Just kidding. Linux is modular. In computer science, the divide and conquer method is a paradigm of, for the design of effective algorithms. In a divide and conquer approach, the actual problem, which appears to be too difficult in its entirety, is broken down into smaller and simpler sub-problems until these are solved or manageable. A solution for the overall problem is then reconstructed from these partial solutions. So in Linux, there are many tools and applications that cover their small range of tasks extreme. So in Linux, there are many tools and applications that cover their small range of tasks extremely well in functional terms. They can then be combined with each other so that even extremely complex tasks can be performed with these relatively simple tools. Of course, not only the tools in Linux are structured in this way, but also the entire system. I'll show you that in a second. The Linux kernel. A definition. The kernel of an operating system forms the hardware abstracting layer. In other words, it regulates the communication and control of the underlying hardware. And there are many different types of hardware from Intel, AMD, Raspberry Pi, ARM, smartphones, smart home, CISC, RISC, microcontrollers and many more. Linux has the broadest hardware support on the planet. Linux is a modular monolithic kernel. This means that it is responsible for memory management, process management, multitasking, load balancing, security compliance and input-output operations on various devices. Everything is stacked in different layers and each layer handles specific tasks, either lower and closer to the hardware or higher and closer to the operating system. Regarding drivers, Linux can load and remove drivers, which are called modules under Linux, during the runtime. This provides the flexibility to address a wide variety of hardware without having to keep all, even unneeded, drivers and other system parts in memory. This can be anything from an USB audio interface to a firewall module or an additional touchpad. There is a huge ecosystem of different tools around this kernel consoles or shells or even command prompts such as bash, zsh or sh and more. Many tools to create, copy, move, manipulate and delete files and directories. Display system information. An almost infinite number of small programs which, as mentioned above, can be easily combined with each other to handle even the most complex tasks. Packet manager to install software. More on this in the second part. The graphical subsystem XORG or the current successor Wyland. XORG, the display server, is the central component of the Windows system, which handles the interaction between hardware, screen, mouse, keyboard, and other input devices, and software, as well as the inter process communication within the Windows system. In other words, when Windows applications communicate with each other. This applies, for example, to the well known copy and paste function. Wayland is the current successor to XORG, which will probably become the standard configuration in most Linux distribution in 2024. The aim of Wayland is to provide a simpler, faster and more secure display server layer than the old XORG. Applications written for XORG can continue to be used under Wayland. There's a downward compatibility. 3D graphics and graphic acceleration are of course also available. This is the Mesa 3D library, an OpenGL graphics accelerator. Under Windows, there is something similar known as Windows DirectX, which is not only used for gaming. 
By the way, the successor to OpenGL or Mesa 3D is called a Vulkan. Desktop environments. I quote the very simplified definition from Wikipedia. I quote the very simplified definition from Wikipedia. A desktop environment is a graphical working or user environment of operating systems in the form of a graphical shell. So an input-output system or human-machine interface. In other words, where we click around with the mouse. The lowest window level is referred to as the desktop. Documents can be stored on it and broken windows ho hover above the desktop, partially or completely covering it. Of course, such a desktop environment does even more things such as fonts, multi-monitor settings, window colors and behavior or keyboard commands and much more. Well-known desktop environments are for example GNOME, KDE, XFCE, Cinnamon, LXDE, Enlightenment, LXQT, Pantheon, and many more. Basically, you can decide which desktop environment suits you best. The audio server is called Pipewire and is the new standard for audio MIDI video with Wyland, for which I have already made two videos here on the channel. Pipewire replaces the Czech audio server. Pipewire roughly consists of two parts. The first part is Pipewire itself, which acts as a set of rules and an adapter infrastructure for all connected audio, MIDI and video devices. And the second part is the session manager, Wireplumper, which actively monitors, manages, establishes, transfers or terminates the audio MIDI video connections based on the rules of Pipewire. The standard file system, which is what you format your hard disk with under Linux are ext4 or btrfs, b3fs or also butterfs. For normal use, an ext4 file system is absolutely optimal. Linux supports many different file systems, including of course FAT16, 32 for USB sticks, NSD cards, and of course the Windows and Mac file systems, in case you ever need to be able to read such disks. A little more about this in the second part. Very important. Under the Linux system, everything is a file. Most configurations are saved in text files. Hardware, such as hard disk and their partitions, USB devices, monitors, mice, keyboards and so on are standardized in the file system, like normal files in system directories. This has many advantages because they can be accessed by all tools that have the necessary authorization. Now to the Linux distributions. There are some, I call them initial distributions. Ubuntu, Red Hat Fedora, SUSE or OpenSUSE, Arch Linux, Slackware, also a veteran that has been maintained by just one person for decades, Gentoo, or as I like to call it, compile everything yourself for the most effective use, which you never get to because you're constantly compiling. There was an announcement that they now also want to offer pre-compiled packages and many more. There are many other derivates or descendants of these initial distributions. For example, the Ubuntu Studio distribution, which is specially designed for audio and video, which I would also advise you to use it if you are new to Linux. Just install it and be happy. Why so many distributions? Because Linux can adapt incredibly well thanks to this modularity. It's like a tailor. You want clothes that fit you perfectly, then a tailor fits everything to the precise millimeter. If something no longer fits, it can be adjusted again. What does that mean? Linux is available for the internet as a web server, firewall, proxy server, router, or in your Fritzbox, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and its remote Apple hosts their cloud mainly on Linux. Not to mention the many social media platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, the Fediverse, and many more. Linux is available for the desktop, for your new notebook, for your computer, for your old 32-bit and 64-bit notebooks, for your tablet, or for your smartphone. A kind of Linux, more precisely, BSD runs on the Apple computer. Speaking of Apple, a current Linux distribution for the latest Apple computers is faster in the benchmarks than Apple's own operating system. Linux is available for your music hardware such as the AK Force, the Push 3 from Ableton, the Open Synth platform Synthian, or the Universal Effect Pedal Mod Audio, and many more. Linux probably runs on your smart TV, in your fridge, on your Android phone anyway, in your heating control, your media box or controls the electronics in your car. Linux is everywhere because Linux is free and because Linux is highly adaptable for everything. 
three important distribution version names. There is LTS, which means long-term support. This is always associated with an extremely stable version. Security updates and bug fixes are always included, but programs are usually updated to the next LTS version. So if you need an absolutely reliable system, for example for your studio production or live performance, this version is well recommended. LTS versions are usually maintained for between 5 to 10 years with bug fixes and security updates. There is STS, short-term support. These contain newer program versions with new features. The STS versions are usually released every 6 months to yearly. And there are rolling releases and they are what the name says. The current version is the current version. Anyone who updates is automatically up to date with the latest version of this Linux distribution. From LTS to STS to rolling releases, the risk of errors is of course increased. But many of these distributions are so stable that, for example, for a computer that is not a production computer, installing an STS or rolling release distribution is no problem at all, if you always want to have the latest features. I would like to mention one last important thing in this overview because this topic is always mentioned in connection with Linux, namely the term open source. Open source means that you can view and read the source code. And that's all. It doesn't automatically mean that it is free of charge. Many companies advertise this, but there are also many bad apples among them. The term open source is not protected and everyone can interpret it however they want. If something is open source, the question should always be asked immediately under what license. The license is important so that you know what you have in front of you and how it may be used. So copying, modifying, selling, commercial use and whether it has an effect on your own product, for example whether your own product must be also published under the same license or it doesn't matter. The best known open source licenses are the GPL and the AGPL and the MIT license. Other licenses with which you have probably already had something to do are the Creative Commons licenses, with which content such as images, videos or texts and their usage regulations are defined. So after this first part with the overview of what Linux is as a kernel, as a software ecosystem and licenses in general, I come to the second part, a bit of organization, tools and programs that are very helpful on music production computers. And practical tips such as backing up the system and your data, again, it's going to be a wild ride. As I said earlier, it's important that you have heard one or two of these things before and can put them into context. Starting with the directory structure. Everything is below slash the root directory. There are no drive names, only subdirectories. Drives, USB sticks or SD cards are mounted and are then accessible in a subdirectory. In a console or shell, you can use the mount command to get an overview of which physical and virtual devices are mount or can be accessed. The file systems. The standard file system for Linux are X4 and uh, BTRFS. There are graphical command line tools like uh, CFDisk or Partition Manager for partition management and creation of file systems, or in other words for formatting disks and partitions like FAT, NTFS, HPFS. You can format and use all common file systems such as I mentioned FAT, NTFS, HPFS or even completely spaced out ones such as the interplanetary file system IPFS. Or you can also access other computers and devices in the network via cloud, WebDAV, SMB, FTP or SSH and mount it as a subdirectory without additional programs. Permissions on directories and files. Linux has a very strong focus on authorizations, in other words, who is in which group and is allowed to do what. Graphical helpers in the desktop environment or text console programs like change mod or change owner or chmod or Joan. The home directory or the user directory. All settings are normally saved as text files in the home directory. There's no such things as a registry as in Windows. You can therefore simply copy all your program settings when you transfer your home directory or restore them from your backup. By the way, always make backups on magnetic hard disks, the old technology, because they fail bit by bit. You can imagine how a porous edge slowly crumbles away. And 
SSD hard disk usually fails completely. With a lot of luck you can still save data here and there, but you shouldn't rely on luck when backing up. Time machine to make an operating system backup. Back in time to backup your data incrementally. G smart control to monitor the hard disk against failure. Partition manager KDE to partition and format your hard disk. Windows programs. In some cases it is necessary or desired to run Windows programs. Under Linux this is possible with Wine, a so-called wrapper, or with a virtual installation. But to take a closer look, there are the following options. Wine. With Wine it is possible to run many programs that have been compiled for the Microsoft Windows operating system under Linux. Wine can be used without a Windows installation. Play on Linux. Play on Linux also uses Wine and comes with a graphical user interface. It facilitates the installation, configuration and uninstallation of programs that are used via Wine. Proton. The aim of Proton is to enable Steam games that were created for Windows to also be played on Linux. Proton uses Vulkan to implement DirectX 11 and DirectX 12. As you remember, this is the 3D graphics library on the successor to Mesa 3D or OpenGL. Bottles. Bottles Gaming Environment is the third in the group, which also uses Wine and provides a simple graphical interface in which a large number of Windows applications or games are already perfectly configured. VirtualBox VirtualBox is a virtualization software from Oracle, which was originally developed by Inotech Systemberatung GmbH from Baden-Württemberg. VirtualBox offers a free community version in which you can install a complete operating system as if you were installing it on hardware. You can install Windows or Linux in it. A macOS is also possible on an experimental basis. What should not be missing in this list is Yabridge. With the free Yabridge and Wine you can use 32-bit and 64-bit VST2, VST3 and CLEP window plugins under Linux. Most of the plugins work just like that. A few others need a little configuration here and there, but the community around Robert, the developer of Yabridge, is very diligent and has many solutions for such situations. Let's move on to the package managers. They ensure that your operating system and programs are always up to date. Unlike other operating systems, package managers have been standard in Linux for decades. APT or DPKG, the Debian Package Manager is also used in pretty much all Ubuntu derivatives. RPM, the Red Hat Package Manager for Fedora. Yast comes from the SUSE Linux distribution. Flatpak belongs to the cross distribution package managers. One source for Flatpak packages is, for example, FlatHub and the authorization program FlatCL. AppImage is also distribution independent. It is actually not a package manager at all, but just a program that consists of a file and can simply be copied around and executed. If you remember, there used to be portable versions of for USB sticks under Windows. In principle, this is exactly the same. You have to update these programs manually. And very important, of course, are the repositories. Very simply put, these are websites that contain machine-readable information so that packet managers can access them and check whether there are new updates and where they can be downloaded and installed. This is super handy, but if you randomly add repositories to your system so that you can install all the software in the world, this has also some pitfalls which can range from a little silly to now I have crashed my system. Linux beginners should keep their hands off it for a while until they have understood what they are doing. Audio, graphics and video. QPW Graph, a pipewire patch bay to connect inputs and outputs for audio, MIDI and video with each other. Show MIDI, multi-platform GUI application to effortlessly visualize MIDI activity. FFmpeg, an extremely large audio and video library for creating all possible audio and video formats and containers from WAV, FLAC, MP3, Opus, MP4, MKV, Move, Surround and so on. FFmpeg is integrated or supplied with many programs such as Bitwig. Sound Converter or Sound Converter, a graphical interface to convert audio files. EasyTech, an old and somewhat strange to use ID3 tag editor and file renamer. 
but it is still the best of its kind. KRename, graphical tool to rename masses of files and directories, also in subdirectories, either simply or with variables, macros and regular expressions. Audacity or Tenacity, a very sophisticated and very comprehensive graphical sound editor. The program is actually much more than just a sound editor. Easy effects. Sound effects with a graphical interface, whether with just an EQ or an additional compressor, limiter or gate, you can add various effects to everything that goes in or out of your computer. VLC. You're probably familiar with the VideoLAN client, the player that doesn't look so pretty but plays everything audio, MIDI, mod and video on the planet. KDN Live. One of many very good open source video editing programs available for Linux. Lossless Cut, an extremely helpful tool for splitting a video in seconds or extracting a small clip from a video without having to re-encode everything. Handbrake, converting video from nearly any format to a selection of modern, widely supported codecs. OBS Studio, to create videos, tutorials or for the live stream or just to have a better option for video calls. And GIMP, a professional graphic program that is always compared with Photoshop. Scanlight for scanning text using a scanner. Sonobus and uh, Video Ninja, a pro for example, one on one sessions, joint music sessions, or jam sessions with several people with audio and video. Mix, free and open source DJ software. Muse Score or Lillipond for writing scores. DAWs, digital audio workstations. Bitwig Studio, Corcus Reaper, Presonus Studio One. Traction Waveform, Ardor, Z Rhythm, Harrison Mixbus, Renoise, VCV Rec, then the plugins, Search XT, Odin 2, Vital and Helm, Dragonfly Reverbs, LSP Linux Studio plugins, Air Windows, from UE Synth and Effects Linux version from Tal Synth and Effects, Modart Piano Tech, Algonaut Atlas 2 Sample Manager, Sononym Sample Manager, Audio Thing Effects and uh, Instruments, Audio Damage, Applied Computer Music Technologies, Audio Plast, Boom Schenker Machines, Auburn Sound Plugins, Ampisonic uh, Plugins and many many more. Now the Office tools. LibreOffice is an office suite with word processing, spreadsheet, presentation database, pending program and math program. Obsidian marks the down suite for your notes, to do, scripts and so on. Ocular PDF viewer. Best PDF viewer also for annotation and uh, notes in PDF files and currently the only software application with a Blue Angel certificate. Minder creating mind maps. Mozilla Thunderbird for your emails. Mozilla Firefox, the secure internet browser with the privacy add-ons, privacy badger, uBlock origin and canvas blocker. KeyPass XC, a very secure password safe. KCalc, a little calculator. KShutdown, schedule the shutdown of your computer. Solar, Linux device manager for Logitech unifying receivers and devices. Spectacular screenshot tool. KDE Connect, exchange files between smartphones and computer or smartphones and smartphones via Wi-Fi. SpeechNote, aka DSNote, a tool that lets you offline transcribe audio and video into text or have texts read out loud in various languages. Communication, collaborating Nextcloud or less secure cloud service provider. Chatting and messengers like Element or Discord. Social networks like Friendica, Mastodon, the Fediverse. So, that was the bulk of information for the start or as a comparison to what you use. I am always interested to know what you like to use and why. Just let me know in the comments. But I also welcome questions and suggestions on the topic in general. I hope it has made you curious if you don't use Linux yet, because I've tried to put a lot in there that you have usually been socialized with by your friends over the years with other operating systems. 
Since I have been committed to Ubuntu or Kubuntu for almost 20 years now, I can recommend the great German site Ubuntu users, for example. But there are also many other sources, including English ones. Um, but of course, the other Linux distributions also have excellent documentations and help pages. I personally often find good detailed information on Arch Linux, for example. If you know of any other good sources, please let me know in the comments. So, and that's all there was to it. My name is Odo Sendai Thank you for your time and attention. And I hope to see you soon again in the next video. Stay healthy, save the future. Take care. See you then. Ciao, ciao.